I'm going to start my video here. There we are. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining us today. It's a beautiful day at Big Heart Ranch. I'm here with the chickens. I'll show you what they're doing. Oh. They're taking their sun bath. They're taking their sun dirt bath. That's their afternoon ritual. It's a social activity and it gets the mites and the pests from getting on them and they really enjoy clustering together and hanging out in the sunshine. So today I thought it would be fun to go over a little bit about guinea pigs. Does anybody have a guinea pig? Raise your hand. You do? <gasps> you might be able to help out then. So I'll show you our little guinea pig truffles. Uh, he has a big pig. He has a pot belly pig. <laughs> oh, you have a pot belly pig. We have pot belly pigs here too. Um, check out our YouTube channel. The lesson that I did on pot belly pigs was a couple weeks ago. So if you have something that you'd like to add, or you say, Jess, that's not right, or I don't know. <laughs> Hi, Silver. Let me know. Email me, okay? Jessica at bigheartranch.org. I always love to, you know, hear from people that actually own animals and what it's like. <laughs> I hear you, Silver. That's Silver, our rooster. He's quite gorgeous, too. He's right there with Coyote, the little silver blue one. They're having a good time. Are you going to talk the whole time? Awesome. So I am going to share my screen with you all. Um, let me admit Holly in. He's noisy today. Have you guys been to Big Heart before? Let's see. I'll unmute you guys. I know. He's going to squawk. Have, has anybody been to Big Heart before? Me. I have. You have? Well, I hope we can welcome you back soon. Yeah, I, I, uh, <laughs> I hear you, Silver. So can everybody see my slideshow presentation? Yeah? Okay. So here we are with the guinea pigs <laughs> and Silver chiming in the background. So guinea pigs, it's kind of an interesting name that they have. They don't, they're not actually from Guinea, and they aren't really pigs. So it's an interesting um, question, where did they get their name? So Guinea pigs originally came from South America in the region on the west hand side, which is called the Andes, the mountain range. And they think that possibly Spanish explorers going from Spain over here, down the coast of West Africa past Guinea, might have picked them up there and then taken them around to South America. And that's where they sort of have flourished in the last several thousand years. And they know that they have long been pets, even in Europe. And because of their size, they're called a pocket pet. So this is Truffles. She's our little female. She's very shy, very, very vocal like Silver, happy baby. My baby girl. So I'll set you down right here. She says, where are my snacks? So then we can head over to what their relatives are. So the relatives of the guinea pig, they think um, are these cavies. So they have the mountain cavy on the bottom here, which you can see. <coughs> Truffle's head looks a lot like kind of both of them. And then the South American Mara, which is the top animal and it's a little bit larger. So guinea pigs are part of the scientific classification cavidae, also known as cavy. Which is, <laughs> they're not part of the pig family at all and um, the uh, guinea pigs aren't really pigs so why are they called pigs? Well perhaps because they make the same squeaky sounds. I don't know if you guys can hear her. They make all sorts of grunts and squeaks and squeals. Um, I kind of think that she's very uh, talkative when I'm coming in with food. So she, she sees us because she associates us with snacks and greens that she'll get really vocal. So here's, here's the lifestyle. So guineas are highly sociable and they live together in small groups of about 10. 
guinea pigs are diur diurnal, which means that they are most active in the dawn <laughs> and dusk, as opposed to nocturnal. And th they think this might be because predators are less active when it's dawn and dusk because of the light changes. And I'm going to put you down so you can have some hay. We'll be back with you in a minute. So um, it's easier for them to hide from predators when the light is changing like that. And their life, their life cycle. So they're mammals. Um, guinea pigs are able to breed when they're only three months old. And the female is called a sow, similar to regular pigs. They're called sows and the males are called boars, just like regular pigs. But instead of having piglets, they call the babies puppies or pups. So that's different. Um, and the pig pups, interestingly enough, are born with their eyes open and they're really developed. They have full fur and everything. So whereas you'll see rabbits sometimes are born like um, hairless and uh, other rodents are born hairless with their eyes closed, guinea pigs aren't. They're very developed. And they suckle for 21 days on milk, but they can start to eat grass by the end of the first week. So that's an interesting thing. And domesticated or pet pigs are known to live um, about six or 10 years with proper care and nutrition. And the oldest one recorded was 15. So there's a little picture down here on the left. And um, it's not a, mess. A, a mama having babies. And then you can see the picture on the right where she's out in the wild and she has three little babies, three little pups following her. And I put a little link right here, you guys, that um, you can access it on our YouTube channel. If you want to, you can look at this uh, YouTube. It's a short delivery and there's nothing um, too dramatic about it. So that might be something that you'd find interesting that you might want to view. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, are you coming to say hello? She says, oh, what's going on, Jess? What's going on here? Hi. Hi, Precious. Hi. I just put her in this little container because in the regular bunny hutch, which is behind me, where she normally lives, the Wi-Fi is, that's probably the border of where I, my Wi-Fi drops at the moment. So I had to bring her outside the hutch so that we could get connected. But, and I wanted you guys to be able to see tr truffles. Um, otherwise, I would have been sitting inside the bunny hutch with her. Um, so guinea pigs, when they're excited, they have really interesting behavior called popcorning. Whereas rabbits will sometimes do that, um, what do they call it? Oh, it's called uh, binking. And rabbits will run around and then they'll hop straight up in the air and they'll do like an acrobatic move. And guinea pigs do that same thing. And I also put another link for you to check out the popcorning. It's pretty funny. They literally just boop, 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 and they, they switch directions up in the air and then come back down. And that's like a really um, positive behavior when your guinea pig is happy. And I thought that was really cute to watch. So that's a short video as well. Yes. So because of their small size, they're really a nice pet. And thousands of people over the years have um, kept them as pets all around the world. They come in a variety of sizes and colors because they've been bred. There are some that have short hair that are more sleek and some that are, um, this. Ab I think it's called Abyssinian is what Truffles is. And she's got this really calic long hair that swirls in all different directions. So that's what her breed is, I'm pretty sure, based on what her hair's doing. She's got quite the wild hair. And they um, also have skinny pigs, which are hairless. So um, my friend has, she's had two of those and her girls really enjoyed raising them. Obviously you can put a sweater on the skinny pigs to keep them warm. Um, yes, hi Silver. So guinea pigs have, um, they've been a favorite pet. And if you're an older, probably like, well, if you're really responsible and you're about what, seven or eight, you probably could care for a guinea pig quite easily. Um, I'll go over some of the things that you need to think about if you were gonna adopt a pet. So their diet. So what do you think they eat? <coughs> Truffles loves about anything that's green. If you bring snacks into her house, she is a happy camper. She'll come right up to you and eat right out of your hand. And she's nibbling some hay right now. Yes, she is. She and is. So <coughs> what are these for, Mama, on the top screen? Like there. So guinea pigs are um herbivores which means they only eat plant matter and they can they can gain all their nutrients that they need to survive just by eating plants 
So in the wild, um, in South America, they would be foraging on grasses and seeds and tree bark <laughs> and flowers. And so they'd have a wide variety of nutrients. Um, in captivity, or if you're keeping a pet, it's not quite as easy to provide such a wide variety of nutrients, but Mama, they do sell some um, uh, packaged items where it, they have flowers and different types of grasses, so you can buy it if you'd like to do it that way. Here at the ranch, we feed primarily uh, Timothy hay, which is a low protein hay, which is better for guineas and rabbits when they're full grown because it doesn't have too much protein for their kidneys to process. So they do really well on it. It's um, very high in fiber, which guinea pigs and rabbits need. Um, they have to grind down their teeth. So this fibrous grass that they're chewing on actually helps to file down their teeth because their teeth grow their whole life. So unlike our teeth, which are made of enamel, they have a different material and it continuously grows, kind of like a beaver. So they need some sort of chew sticks um, of wood or hard grasses, sea grasses, where they can continually whittle down those teeth and keep them in a good alignment. And Timothy Hay suits them really, really well. So if you wanted to, you could also supplement a little bit of Timothy Hay pellets. <coughs> but you'd only want to do a small amount because the pellets are really concentrated. It's like if you were going to be feeding a granola bar, you know, it's really packed with a lot of nutrients and it doesn't allow them to, to use their teeth in the same way and file down those teeth. So it's really important that they, their primary source is hay. And um, fresh fruits and vegetables are also really essential to them because guinea pigs, uh, similar to humans, don't... <coughs> I know, Silver, that's a lot to say. Um, they don't make their own vitamin C. So you have to give them a little supplement of vitamin C and it's easy to do that with fresh fruits and vegetables, like a slice of orange would be sufficient or a couple of leaves of kale. Um, it doesn't have to be fruit. Red peppers or bell peppers are a really good source of vitamin C and Truffles loves them. So we're really fortunate to have a farm close by that donates some of their extra vegetables to us. And a couple times a week, I go down there and pick it up, and then the rabbits all get fresh greens, broccoli, kale, whatever is in season, and they absolutely love it. So when when this um when we're able to open and you guys can come and visit, that'll be a fun thing for you to do is to feed the rabbits and guineas their fresh veggies and the chickens too. They love it. So let's see. We'll move down to what is safe. What's safe and what's a good source of vitamin C? So we kind of just touched on it. One slice of tangerine or a little florette of broccoli would be good. Um, all the fruits and vegetables on the right-hand side are safe for guinea pigs and rabbits. You just want to watch the, um, the protein content. So when you have a young guinea or a young rabbit, things like parsley and you could switch from timothy to alfalfa, which is higher in protein. So when they're growing, a little bit more protein is good. But then once they're about a year old, you want to switch to a lower protein source of food. And the timothy is greater orchard hay. So guinea pigs are super social animals. They love to live in groups. Our guineas have always lived with our rabbits and they do really well. Um, just today, Truffles was getting groomed by one of our rabbits, Rudy, and they love it. They're completely um, cohabitating wonderfully and nobody fights and it's a really beautiful thing. So typically you'd want a boy or a girl to live together. Um, two boys will oftentimes fight but usually two girls will get along. So if you had one boy and two girls, that would be fine. Obviously um, you wanna take it slow and have them socialized next to each other to see if they're gonna bite through the cage and then you can introduce them. The thing that they do is they chase each other and they would bite at their bottoms. So their rump is where they would bite and you just have to watch for that. Um, uh, and then obviously take them apart if they do. Hi, sweetheart, are you gonna come say hi? Are you gonna come say hi? Yeah. So they like to have these little hidey houses, and Truffles has this one here, which is a little small hidey house, and she can hop up here, which she does, and she can fit inside, but the rabbits can't. So she never wants to be cozy and, and solitary, you know, or have some quiet time. She has that space where the bunnies can't get to her if she wants to stay in there when it's cooler in the um, winter months, then she can... Oftentimes she'll pull hair out or she'll collect um, bunny hair and take it in there, make a little nest so she can insulate the house a little bit better. And um, 
So the guinea pigs usually want to live in around a temperate climate, so something like 60 to 80 degrees, which is what we have here in Malibu. It, it's very rarely um, extreme temperatures being close to the ocean, which is nice. And even today we have a nice cool breeze, even though it's pretty warm. And the rabbits are in a hutch that's uh, sheltered and it has shade cloth on both sides and it's um, got a breeze coming through, so it's really nice for them. And um, in the summertime when it does get warm, we freeze uh, large water bottles, keep them in the freezer and then pull them out, put them in the hutch and they can, you know, snuggle up to those if they need to cool off because rabbits and guineas um, don't, they don't have the ability to sweat. Well, rabbits do a little bit, but guinea pigs don't at all. So it's really important that you have some sort of ability to have them cool off. Our hutch has a cement floor, which is also another uh, way for them to stay cool and on um, the guineas and the guinea and the bunnies will uh, move the hay away so that they can get full contact with the cement and they'll lie down and cool off their stomach that way. So they do have the ability to stay pretty comfortable even in the hotter summer months, um, which is ideal. And for a housing situation, you, you need to have probably about seven square feet, they say, for one guinea pig. And it goes up uh, a little bit. If you were going to have two, it'd be like 10 square feet. And if you can, and it's safe to take your bunny or your guinea pig out of the hutch and have them in the house, you can do that. If you didn't have another pet, like a dog or a cat that might chase them, you know, you always need to make sure that they have like some sort of penned in area or block a room off so that they can have access to that because they're really curious and they like to run around and do acrobatic things and jump on furniture and jump on chairs. And, you know, it's fun for them, have a little ramp and hidey houses, they like hide behind pillows and stuff. Um, and if you have the ability to have them in the house, you can potty train them pretty easily. So our bunny whisperer, uh, Vicki Anderholt, she's in the San Fernando Valley and she runs a bunny rescue. And she, t she came out a couple of years ago because we were wondering how in the world to keep the bunny hutches clean. And she said, well, you put the hay, the Timothy hay in like a little bin and the bunnies will hop in there and the guinea pigs will hop in there and they'll go to the bathroom while they're nibbling on their timothy hay and you'd be surprised you guys how quickly the rabbits potty train themselves and they actually prefer to go in one spot so um i have one of the bunnies at home that was surrendered last year and she's she was a home bunny so we kept her at my house just because we weren't sure how she'd do with the temperature and she didn't have a buddy yet. So she's already potty trained herself. She goes in one little area and so does truffles. If you are consistent and you change the bin every day with fresh hay, you will have your animal trained in no time. And then you can let them go around the house and you'd be surprised at how easily they don't make a mess in your house. It's incredible. So dogs and cats are not the only ones that can be potty trained. It's pretty fabulous. And it's fun to have them walking, you know, around the house and being curious if it's safe. So let's see, I think that was it. I wanted to introduce you to truffles now. Let me get out of this screen. Sorry, you guys, I'm learning all this. Okay. So let's see, did I unmute everybody? Does anybody have any questions? You wanna have any questions? No. Hi guys. Hi. Hi. So guineas make all sorts of little squeals and squeals. Um, and that's one of the things that they think they might have coined um, a pig because they squeal like regular pigs. They're very vocal animals. She does all sorts of little grunts and squeaks, especially when you're going to hold her. But as soon as you do pick her up carefully and you keep her close, she settles right down. She really enjoys to be snuggled. And we got her, we, I think she was surrendered like a year ago. And when we first got her, we couldn't even get near her. And now she'll curiously come up to us. She'll crawl on our legs. She is so much more comfortable with human contact. And she'll just mellow right out and snuggle. So I think if, we, if you had a baby or if you had a guinea pig from a young age, it would be really possible to have them like totally tame. And, um, hi Sprinter. You can't have truffles. Sprinter's down here checking out. Where's Tuff, where is she? She's right there. Can you guys see her? No. 
She's our chicken. She's going, ooh, what's all that speaking about? Shelby, do you have any questions? Have you seen a guinea pig before? No? So maybe um, when the pet stores open up again, you guys could go and visit some and see what you think. They're really cute. Can you see us? Yeah, she can see you and she can hear you. What about you, uh, Cece Burrito? Um, I want a guinea pig. You do? Do you have friends that have guinea pigs? My friends were going to get one. Um, but then they realized that they um, shouldn't get one. They were, um, I think that they had dogs or something. Oh yeah. And they thought that it would be easier to like cuddle dogs and do stuff with dogs rather yeah. than a guinea pig. Uh -huh. Well, they are. Uh, That's true. Yeah. yeah. But my parents say I can't have a guinea pig. Well, you'll have to come and visit us when we open yeah. fully. And you can visit Truffles and the Bun Buns here at Big Heart. Hi, sweetheart. So do you live far away? Are you in California? Um, yeah, we actually live like 30 minutes away. Oh, so you guys can come and visit when we open. Okay, yeah. so have your mom and dad go on the um, website and sign up for the newsletter at the bottom of the web page. And then you'll know when we're open to the public and you can come out and visit. Um, I think it's really important, especially for some families can't have a certain animal, so it's really cool to be able to come out and bond with each different animal. You know, some people can't have a pot belly pig, and so they can come to the ranch and, and learn about the pigs and, and um, build rapport with them, because they're all individuals. That's cool. So yes, you'll have to come and visit. So what about you, Dr. Dr. Eris? Do you have any questions? It's actually Phoenix. Hi, Phoenix. So uh, you no. had pigs, right? Yeah, I have a pig and I have two dogs. You have a pig. Does the pig come in the house? Yeah, when he goes to bed, but then he's all outside and he's... Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Did you get him as a piglet? No, he has a crate like a dog. Did you get him as a piglet? So you've raised him? No, he... Rescued we rescued him. Oh, good for you guys. That's amazing. Do you know there's a, a Malibu Rescue Pigs? Sherman Balin runs the Malibu Rescue Pigs, and she has uh, pigs if you need a partner for your pig. Yes. 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 Sorry. <laughs> I'm in the background <laughs> letting him do it. Uh, if you guys um, need Malibu. a partner for your pig. Yeah, we, I know, I know. German, so we kind of like, we, we're kind of like, you know, we want to do that. You know, he's just like, such, we rescued him and he's such a great temperament and he's just really sweet. He's in and out. And he just- That's is, amazing. We have four acres in, close in Malibu, you know. And awesome. Just, just wanders. He's living the life. I What's know, your pig's so name? Like, we rescued him with the name. Okay. So Hamlet. We're vegan. <laughs> we're vegan. You're like, uh, if he answers to Hamlet, we're keeping it. <laughs> No, That's no, we rescued it from a family, from a family who had him like locked up in a, in a crate with two Dobermans. You like, guys are amazing. Con concrete pad. So we got him and you know, his name's Hammy and we're vegan. And so Hammy's such an awkward name for a bunch of vegans. But, okay, you but, gotta giggle about it. I love that you guys did that. Thank you. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah so we know Hammy Nora. needs a friend. We know but Nora. Phoenix goes to Webster, so we know Nora. Oh, nice. Yeah. So you're, you're part of the family then. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So come and visit us when we open back up, okay? Yeah, we will. Maybe we can get your school to come for a tour. Yay. And you can always send me a picture of Hamlet. I'd love to see. Yeah, where should yeah. we send it? Where send, it send it to me at Big Heart Ranch. Uh, we Jessica can at Big them. Ranch. We can Network. bring them. We can and bring them. That we can have them here because there's all sorts of like, um, you know, you have to be careful with animals and passing along different things. So I'd have to check. Plus the fact that they don't know each other, so that would be another, you know, we'd have to see about socializing or introducing, but it's something to talk about. Is it Mia, M-I-A? It's Jessica. Jessica. At okay. bigheartranch.org. Okay. Thanks, Jessica. You're so welcome. Do you have any questions, Phoenix, about guinea pigs? Uh, no. No? Are you curious about them? Did you learn a little bit of something, something? Did you learn? Hi, sweetie. No. Oh, she's, she's, so, she's so happy because I just put new hay down, so she's wanting to have a snack. 
let's see who else is here with us. Chris is here. Amanda's here. Does anybody else have any questions? No. Do you have a question, Paxton? No. Do you think she's super cute? I think she sounds so cute. I like her little like squeaks. And bubbles. They sound like little bubbles. Uh huh. She's a bubbly little thing. But if I hold her too long and she's feeling nervous, she'll nibble me. So I have to always be a little bit cautious because, you know, they're protecting themselves. They're little prey animals, so they're always like thinking, ooh, are you safe? Do they have eyes? sharp nails? What are their nails like? They, they have do sharp have sharp nails, and I have to trim her nails about every two months. They continuously grow, and the, the front ones, I don't know if you can see them. Oh, yeah. They're more curved. Mm -hmm. Can you see those guys? So we use little cat nippers, or I use little cat trimmers, nail trimmers. And I usually have somebody help me because I like for her to be eating her vitamin, which she likes. It's a little like alfalfa infused pellet. And um, so she'll nibble that and I can do her nails at the same time. There are ways that you can hold them up. Like if you had a table and a towel, you can hold her like this, just the way I have her. So this would be the table, my other hand. And you can basically um, isolate each little nail that way. But because I don't want her to be stressed out at all, I want her to be eating when she's getting her nails trimmed. So she doesn't associate it with a stressful thing. Hi, Listen to her. <laughs> Let me see if, she, if she'll eat. She's right. safe. She says, where are my snacks, Auntie Jess? Where are my snacks? Yeah. So you just want to make sure that you look for um, Bumblefoot. If you keep your cage really clean with clean bedding, you won't have the problem. But sometimes like in certain, you know, rescues, you'll see it where their little pads have sores and it's from bacteria. And so you'd want to check if you were going to adopt one, check the bottom of their pads for any kind of irritation or um, infection. And it's basically staph infection. But these guys are cleaned every two days and they're on. They're in a pretty clean area. Yeah. We keep them pretty clean here at Big Heart Ranch. Yes, we do. Oh, yes, we do. And I always do like a once over and check their eyes and their noses. You want to listen for any kind of upper respiratory, like cough or sneezing and um, skin infection. The other thing that we do is every six months we do a um, pest control because they can get mites and lice. Because they're outside also, they have more of a chance of getting things like that because they come in contact with rodents that come around their hatch. Oh my goodness. We've pretty much rat-proofed rat it off, but there's still exposure. So they do get Invermectin every six months, which keeps them pest-free. And they don't usually need baths. There's mixed things on the internet. There's some people that say you can give them baths, but they're pretty fastidious about cleaning themselves, just like rabbits are. So unless you adopted one that was a mess, I don't think you'd need to bathe them. They have like a dry shampoo that you can buy. But are they stinky at all? What's that? Are they stinky at all? Like are they they're naturally? Not, they're not stinky at all. Not at all. There's no odor at all. And they have a little white secretion that comes out of their eyes that they use to um, wipe onto their fur and it keeps their, their oils on them. So it's a really interesting like little gland that they produce that substance. Um, and then you'd want to check their ears and periodically I check, she just nibbled me. Don't nibble me. She says, where are my snacks, Auntie Jess? Where are they? Put me down, my goodness, I'm trying to eat. Um, just check their teeth to make sure that they're not getting too long because they mm. do, just like rabbits, they need to be trimmed. She nibbled me, Shelby, that little stinker. He says, I want some more to eat. Let me see if she'll sit right here with some hay. What do you think? What do you think? You want to have a little, a little tray of food? Yeah. She really likes to be held closely. She's a snuggle bug. Yeah. She's a snuggle bug. So there's a lady that wants to surrender. I think she has one guinea pig. So next time you guys tune in, we might have another one. We'll see how it goes with the quarantine. A lot of people get them and they either have allergies, you know, and they don't realize they're going to be allergic. So there's all sorts of situations, you know, that happen. So anybody else out there in our, our world, what are you guys doing for fun today? I'm FaceTiming my friends. Yeah? Are you adjusting to this new techie world that we're all living in? It's annoying. It is kind of annoying, but you guys think about it. 
it's not going to be forever. It's a temporary time. And if we can sort of find a silver lining in it, um, like I was thinking today, that even though there's a lot of danger, and I'm not saying that people aren't getting sick, but if we can try and focus on um, what can we take away from this time? You know, has it given you some time to slow down in your life? Has it given you time to reconnect with your animals or your family or, you know what I mean? Maybe try and find something positive in it because I think every lesson in our lives has something we can learn from and take something positive from. So I was thinking it's just allowing me to really slow down and um, take time, take time to breathe and stay still and really be in each moment. Like right now with you guys, I'm really enjoying just being with you and not thinking about what I have to do later. And we all live in such a fast paced world that sometimes these things can be a reset button, like a reset. Oh, did you hurt yourself? So I'm glad that you're finding some connection with your friend, Cece. Thank you. You're welcome. And Phoenix, send me a picture of your piggy, Hammy. Yeah. Does Hammy know any tricks? No. He doesn't? No. I was thinking, um, they say that pigs are super smart, that they'll even, like, you can get oh, a dog. Picker. I can tell you one of the tricks he does on us. What does he do? So he has these little treats. Yes. They're in a bucket, sealed tight, and he rolls them over, and then he opens the thing with, like, his paws. Oh, he's resourceful, isn't he? Yeah. So he's figuring it out. That's amazing. And what are the treats made of? Do you know? Um, Is it like a fruit snack or something? No, it's for his midnight snack. Oh, that's so cute. A midnight snack for the baby. And um, yeah, you'll have to come out because next time we can do a little tour of the big pot belly pigs for you guys. We've got, a, we've got Rosie and Freddie and Piggles Wiggles, and Mabel, and Tootsie, and Einstein. I think that's all of them. So you can help me and give me some tips. Do your, does your pig like broccoli? No, no. So today I was feeding broccoli to the pigs. At first they were like, I don't know about this, but then they ended up taking a bite and liking it, and then they kept eating it. But I'm sure that they wanted strawberries or something else. Hi, little precious. Well, I appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm glad that everybody's in a positive way and doing well and staying healthy. Do me a favor and share the, share the Zoom with a friend. Maybe next week I'll have twice as many kiddos and you can talk to your friends too. Thank you. You're welcome. So nice to share the time with you. Thank you. I'll see you next time, okay? Bye. And, and if you want to, go ahead and check out um, the YouTube channel because all the recordings on the other animals are listed there along with other activities. I did a nature tic-tac-toe and um, other stuff. So it's fun. Okay. Thank you. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Have a wonderful day. Bye. 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 Bye.